Why should I accept your Jesus if you're living just like me <laughs> and I can stay in my rebellion and have the same results? Why should, I, why should I accept Jesus? Why should I accept Jesus if I can go, do my things my way in my rebellion and get the same results? Come on, put your hand on your heart and say, Lord, let me hide thy word in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Lord, give me ears to hear and a heart to receive. In Jesus' name, praise God. Come on, let's give the Lord a big hand of praise. Amen. Praise you, Jesus. We lift you up. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Jesus, we lift you up. In Jesus' name, we bind the flesh right now. We take every thought captive under the obedience of Christ. We release the mind of Christ right now. Holy Spirit, convict us where we need it. Encourage us where we need it. Speak to us. Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, give us revelation. We need it today. We need it today then. More than ever before. More than ever before, God. Especially in these times. Thank you, Lord. Fill my mouth, fill my heart with your word, with your words, your message. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. It's a privilege to be here. Thank you so much for letting me speak and be with you guys again. It's awesome. It's good to see y'all and to be here. Uh, this message is uh, <laughs> its not a thank you, Jesus, amen, hallelujah message, okay? <laughs> For some reason, God never gives me those, or very seldom gives me those messages, so I don't, I don't know. So I'm just, right. just <laughs> be humble and before God and just, obey the Lord. yeah, just obey the Lord, amen. Let's open up 2 Timothy chapter 3. If you would, if you have your Bible, please open up. There's some Bibles on the, on the desk here if you want. Just uh, let's read some Bible here today. This message is about turn, turn away before you're turned away. Turn away before you're turned away. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 to 9. Let's start off with that. But know this, Paul is writing to Timothy, that in the last days, perilous times, perilous as in hard, difficult, grievous times will come. Okay. Colon. Not period, colon. And this is going to, this is, what will show you what these last days will be like, what those perilous times will be like. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Let's pause here for a second. Does that sound familiar? Yeah. <laughs> Would you guys agree that we're in the last days? Yeah. Right. <laughs> I would agree too. We're for sure in last days. Verse 3, unloving, unforgiving. Oh, we got that a lot. Yeah. People not wanting to forgive because they're just so angry and I have a right to be angry. Because this person offended me because this person is against what I stand for. I'm offended and therefore I'm not forgiving. Slanderers, oh, we have that so much in the church. Without self-control, just yesterday on the news, another shooting in a school. I heard brutal, falls in the same category, despises of good, sure, every day, good is called evil, evil is called good, so much despises, so many despises of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, and I'll listen to the next one, having a form of godliness, but denying its power, and from such people turn away. Paul says, from such people, turn away, turn away, get away from those people. For of this sort, from, from, for of this sort are those who creep into households and make captives of gullible or weak women, loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts, 
always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Let's just pause here for a second before we read on. Guys, this is, this is what we're in right now. This message is like a, I felt like, it's like a mirror. This message God gave me a couple of weeks ago, six weeks or so ago, five weeks ago. Praying about it last night, even just even convicted me with the verses that I'm going to give today. It's, this is the state of the church. This is the state of the world right now. That's what we're in right now. Yeah. But what do we do about it? What do we do about it? What do we do if we might be even part of this, of this whole list? Maybe in part, maybe not fully. What if we are having a form of godliness, but not walk in the power? Paul says in the, in the letters to the Corinthians, he says that the kingdom of God, the kingdom where it's coming manifest, where stuff happens, where God is present, it's not just in persuasive words, but in power yeah. yeah the demonstration of power and signs wonders miracles the stuff that we read of right Amen. so why do we not why do we not see this why do we not see what god told us what jesus told us to do yeah. are we just learning and never able to come to the knowledge of truth paul says in the letter before in the first letter he says well, God, our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. What is that truth? Well, there's only one truth. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, Amen. and the life. Yes. So we may, we have to, or we, we ought to, come to the knowledge, the understanding, the revelation of that truth, who Jesus really is, the full gospel Jesus. Not just the, okay, I just go to church Sundays, maybe Wednesdays, Maybe even on the second, on, the, on another day in the week where I just pray, and then that's it. No, we, every day, every day, having that communion with God, yes. and then living in the power, yes. not in the religion. That's right, that's right. Always learning, always learning. Oh, I want to listen to, to this preacher preach about this topic. I want to listen to this teacher teach about that topic. I want to learn about this on YouTube because I'm, I just fancy it for the moment. The, doesn't the Bible also say that, you know, in the last days, people will seek out teachers yeah. that will tickle their ears, itching ears. Itching ears? That's where we're in right now. That's the time we're in right now. <laughs> There's no time to waste for us. There's no time to waste for you. Turn away. Paul says, turn from those people. Turn away before you are turned away. Mm. Okay, let me start again from verse 6 here. For of this sort are those who creep into households and make captives of gullible women, loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Verse 8, now as Janus and Jambres resisted Moses, so do these also resist the truth. What truth? What truth? The truth. The tr God's truth. Yeah. Not Pelosi's truth, not Biden's truth, not the Pentecostal's truth, not the Baptist's truth, not the what people think truth, or my truth, or your truth. No, the truth of God. The written word, the black and white word of God, the, the truth, who became flesh, who died for us and rose again and gave us his spirit to live life, to live in life and in life abundantly here on this planet right now. But these also resisted, just like Janus and Jemus resisted Moses. They resist that truth. They are men of corrupt minds, disapproved, or women of corrupt minds, disapproved concerning the faith. But they will progress no further, for their folly will be manifest to all, as theirs also was. That's where we're in right now. I'm going to, I'm going to expound on this. What does that mean, Janus and Jambres resisted Moses? What is that about? Let's go to Exodus 7. <coughs> Exodus 7. Uh, verses 11 and 12. Situation where Moses is 
coming before Pharaoh over and over again, trying to release, trying to get Pharaoh to release the people of God. Verse 11, but Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers, that's Janus and Jambres. So the magicians, key word here, magic, witchcraft okay. of Egypt, they also did in like manner with their enchantments. Uh-huh, the same, just, just with magic, okay, well, okay. For every man threw down his rod, and they became serpents. But Aaron's rod, who was already a serpent, they did that first, swallowed, swallowed up their rods, and Pharaoh's heart grew hard, and he did not heed them as the Lord had said. Why? Well, we can do that too. That's just an easy trick to do. My guys can do that too. Why should I, why should I listen to you? That's not big. Why should I pray? I just go to the pharmacy and just get some, some pills to deal with my sickness or my headache or whatnot. Okay. I can do it. Why should, why should I lay hands on, on the sick if, if I can just send them to the doctor? All right. Why should I pray against COVID if I just get the vaccine? Okay. Verse 20. And Moses and Aaron did so, just as the Lord commanded. So he lifted up, Moses, lifted up the rod and struck the waters that were in the river, in the sight of Pharaoh, in the sight of his servants. And all the waters that were in the river were turned to blood. The fish that were in the river died, the river stank, and the Egyptians could not drink the water of the river. So there was blood throughout all the land of Egypt. Now listen to this here. Then the magicians, again, hello magic, of Egypt, did so with their enchantments. And Pharaoh's heart grew hard, and he did not heed them, as the Lord had said. And Pharaoh turned and went into his house, neither was his heart moved by this. Why? Well, my guys can do the same. Why should I turn to God? Why should I listen to God if I can do it my way, in my rebellious way, which is the same as witchcraft and magic? Why, why should I turn to God if I, why should I accept your Jesus if you're living just like me and I can stay in my rebellion and have the same results? Why should I, why should I accept Jesus? Why should I accept Jesus if I can go, do my things my way in my rebellion and get the same results? Right. That's, that's this. That is resisting the truth. Chapter 8, 6, and 7. So Aaron stretched out his hand and over out his hand over the waters of Egypt, and the frogs came up and covered the land of Egypt. And the magicians again did so with their, encha their enchantments and brought up frogs on the land of Egypt. Again, the same thing. Verse 17 and 19. And they did so. Um, hang on a second here. Let's start in 16. So the Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron, stretch out your rod and strike the dust of the land, so that it may become lice throughout all the land of Egypt. And they did so. For Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod and struck the dust of the earth, and it became lice on man and beast. And all the dust of the land became lice throughout all the land of Egypt. Now listen to this. Now the magicians so worked with their enchantments to bring forth lice. But they could not. So there were lice on man and beast. Then the magician said to Pharaoh, This is the finger of God. But Pharaoh's heart grew hard, and he did not heed them, just as the Lord had said. You can push God so far, and at some point God says, No, now is enough. I'm going to show you what I'm really about. Now I'm showing you what I really can do, and where your rebellion and your own way, your own flesh, your own ways fail. As we just read in 2 Timothy, it's going to become apparent. Let me come there back again. But they will progress no further. The men of corrupt minds, disapproved concerning faith, the ones that resist the truth, those people that fill, Fill the church and fill the world. Doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter anymore. Today, it does not matter anymore if they call themselves a Christian or what they call themselves. Because 
you have got the same people in the church as outside the church. But they will progress no further, for their folly will be manifest to all as theirs also was. We are in this time where witchcraft and rebellion and all that medicine stuff is going to fail. I'm not going to say anything against it in the sense of don't take it. Because, you know, sometimes you try it God's way and then you just end up being in the, same, in the same situation where God says, okay, now go that route, which happened to me when I had cancer. Well, we prayed and fasted and God did mighty things. But then in the end, he said, okay, now have the operation. That's a different story for a different day. Have that, I gave this testimony here before. But my point is, before you... Some, most of the times, before we go to God, we go to the pharmacy or we go to the doctor right. and completely disregarding right. that there's an easier way, a cheaper way. Right. Proven way. Yeah. yeah, in a proven way. And now we're here with, the, I don't know, the fourth wave of COVID. Yeah. And the vaccine is doing what it's doing. And... Even vaccinated people fall, end up in the ICU. That's the time we're in right now. We're in the last days. I'm not saying this is like, I'm not saying Jesus is coming back tomorrow, but we're in the last days. We're in grievous, hard, difficult times where people love themselves more than God, pleasure more than God, money more than God. Turn away from those people, Amen. Paul says, before you are turned away. James chapter 1, 26. Okay. If anyone among you, James says to Christians, thinks he is religious, meaning a careful follower of his belief. Or in other words, if any one of you thinks he's a real follower of Jesus and does not brittle his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is useless. You don't take care of what is coming out of your mouth and you <laughs> confess to be a Christian, a real follower of God. And you just let your heart flow over with all this. <clears throat> Your walk with God is for nothing. Okay. That's, that's what James says right here. It's not me. That's James saying this here. That's Holy Spirit speaking to the church. Amen. Let's pause it for a second. We're going to come back to this. Put your finger in there. I'm going to come back. We're going to go to Matthew just real quick. Let's put your finger in James. I'm going to come back to this. Let's go to Matthew 22. Verse 1, And Jesus answered and spoke to them by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven, salvation, is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son and sent out his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding and they were not willing to come. Again, he sent out other servants saying, tell those who are invited, see, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and fatted cattle are killed and all things are ready. Come to the wedding. It's two times he sent out his servants. God saying, come in. I got something good for you. The wedding is ready. I, everything is prepared. And they send him away. Come on, guys. Everything is ready. Come on in. It's going to be fun. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be good. But they made light of it and went their ways. One to his uh, own farm, another to his business. Now listen to this. And the rest seized his servants, treated them spitefully and killed them. We've seen this. We've seen this in, in the world, in the church, in both. God is sending out his servants, says, come on, come on, let's get going, you know, bring fruit, do the will of God, you know, here's what you get, it, you know, receive Jesus, be filled with the Holy Spirit, you know, baptized, 
Go out, preach the gospel, heal the sick, cast out demons, speak in new tongues. Come on, let's do this thing. This is awesome. Let's do this. People said, nah, tomorrow, next week. Maybe only on that special day that the church determines to have an outreach. Only then. And another servant, another minister comes in and says, come on, let's, let's do this thing. We've got to evangelize. We've got to do the will of God. Let's go. Let's move in the power. Come on, let's do this thing. And then the people say, ah, I have my business. I'm busy. And then other people say, have you heard this preacher on Facebook? Uh -huh. Did you see what he did? How he looked at that woman? How what he said there and then? Oh, how dare he? Killing his anointing or trying to kill his, his, his reach. That's spiritual murder, slander. And the rest seized the servants, treated them spitefully and killed them. We don't want to hear nothing about the power of God. We don't want to have move of God in our church. We got our program. But when the king heard about it, he was furious and he sent out his armies destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. Then he said to his servants that are left, the wedding is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy. Therefore go into the highways and as many as you find invite to the wedding. Amen. Get the rest, get all the, the leftover that the other ones, not the invited ones, the other ones, get them in, get them in. We, everything is prepared. Food is ready. We're ready. Let's, let's get the, the people in. So the, those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all whom they found, both bad and good. And the wedding hall was filled with guests. I believe that's where we are right now in this, in this season, in this time. I believe, that's what I believe, what I see, what I've witnessed in the body of Christ at the moment, all over the planet. God sent out his servants and said, come on, let's do this thing. Let's build the kingdom. And people said, no. And then he sent out his servants. Come on, let's do this thing. And people destroyed his servants. And now he's sending out his servants again. But this time it's not in the church. You don't see much going on in the church anymore, do you? Because God is doing stuff outside now. He's going to get the people that are bad and good out there. And he's using, using the servants that are willing to go out. The ones that are left. For example, Todd White, who is, you know, has his, his big evangelism ministry. He's training people to go out and they move in signs, wonders and miracles. Not just him, but also the people that he trains and sends out. Or the guy here who is in Orlando, the, the Dutch guy, um, the last Reformation guy, uh, Torben Zondergaard. He came, he was persecuted in Europe. He came, he had to come over here as a refugee, literally. Won't believe it, but that's... <laughs> it really happened and now he's training people here to send them out not in the churches stuff is not happening in the churches it's happening out there in the restaurants and the walmarts and the beaches and the parks on the streets on the corners that's where god is right now Amen. thank you lord but when the king came in to see the guests he saw a man there who did not have on a wedding garment so what's the deal about this here? So what I re read here in the comments was that in the context back then, when invited to a wedding and you were not prepared or not rich enough or whatever to have a wedding garment, it was provided for you. The host would say, okay, here's something nice to wear. So the deal here is this guest was offered a wedding garment, but does not have it on. Okay. So he said to him, friend, how did you come in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. This, those are the people that we just read about in James. Those are the people that come in and say, but I'm a Christian. And then they go out and live like the world. They don't have their wedding garment on. They refuse to put it on. They, ref they stay in their, in their rebellion, in their witchcraft. And refuse to wear the garment, <laughs> the jersey that shows the world, I am a follower of Christ. I am willing to 
to crucify my flesh and to say no to the things that are not of God and yes to the things that are of God. He was speechless. And the king said to the servants, bind him hand and foot, take him away and cast him into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. That's hell. It's talking about hell here. Now listen to this. For many are called, but few are chosen. To walk in the power of God has nothing to do with, oh, this person is special. Oh, well, that person is just called or chosen. Well, God just appointed this person special. No, no. We're all called. We're all invited. Every one of you sitting here, you were and you are invited. Still, the invitation still stands. Amen. The invitation still stands today. Even you know, I'm not preaching here to put you under condemnation. I'm preaching here in this way to tell you to turn away before you are turned away. Yeah. Like this king turned away this, I don't know if he was naked, but let's just call him naked, undressed unappropriately dressed person so let's turn away from all this this pride and all this worldly stuff back to God before God has to turn us away because that time will come I had a, a situation happen or was was part of a, of a, a prayer meeting in Germany about 10 11 years ago or so and uh, Americans came over um, small group prayed together had fellowship together and one of them shared a vision or picture or something that he had he said he saw a line and on the line was a black part a white part and a gray part in the middle and he saw the lines on this on the sides come closer and closer so the black part and the white part come closer together and the gray part coming smaller and smaller yeah. and he said and that was more than 10 years ago probably he said this is what God's gonna do soon God is gonna get rid of all the lukewarmness I'm gonna make people choose Praise that's God. where we're at right now God. we're in the time where you get to choose yeah. because you see it, if you make a decision now especially in these COVID times it has repercussions and it will in the future one way or the other Many are called, few are chosen. Let's turn away before we are turned away. Let's go back to James, if you still have your finger in there. Oh. Oops, no. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. I lift you up, God. Amen. You're worthy. Praise God. Continue speaking to us, Holy Spirit. Okay, let's just recap. Verse 26, if anyone among you thinks he is religious, a real follower of Christ, and does not riddle his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this one's religion, his faith, is useless. Here it comes, 27, here's hope. Pure and undefiled walk with God, or religion, before God and the Father is this, colon, two things, just two things. To visit the orphan and widows in their trouble. What does that mean? People that cannot take care of themselves. People that are really in need. That cannot do it themselves. That need your help. The sick people, the maimed, the lame, the blind, the real, the needy people in any way, shape or form for today. Okay. And the second one is to keep oneself unspotted from the world. I can say this differently in Jesus' words. Love your Lord, your God, with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Put him first. Love him with everything. Amen. And then love your neighbor as yourself. That's the law and the prophets. That's all of this. Sounds so easy. But, yes, we're in the world, man. We're just in the world. Yeah, that's right. I heard a sermon just the other day. A preacher said, yeah, we are gardeners in Satan's garden. You're right. We are in the world and it's tough. Everything stands against us, followers of, of God. Yes, that's true. We're in the world, but we're not off the world. And there's the hope. Yeah. We ought to be 
salty yes, yes. to make people thirsty for God. That's right. Because if you lay on the hands on the sick and they do recover, yeah. man, people get thirsty. They're like, I want that. Right. You have more of that? That's right. If they're like, think of all those people that are depressed and suicidal and like have real issues. Mm -hmm. Why not say in Jesus' name that suicidal spirit, that, that spirit has to come out in Jesus' name. Yeah. See what happens. Yeah. Pray until it goes. Until it goes and see what happens. Make them thirsty. Be salty in a good way. <laughs> Take care of those orphans, spiritual orphans. They need a father, not you, him, the heavenly father who called us all, who called you, who's calling you right now, who's inviting you again right now to be part of his wedding and, and to bring fruit. Jesus said, if you love me, you keep my commandments. Hey, I'm the true vine. If, you're in, if you abide in me, you bring fruit. And if when you bring fruit, I'm going to prune you. I'm going to chisel you. I'm going to correct you so that you bear more fruit. I'm going to help you. Yes. I'm going to give you more of my anointing. You, you show some results. Don't despise the small beginnings. If you show some results, I'm right there with you. Let's go. Let's do this. Let's get more. Let's get it, man. Let's come on. Yes. That's the Holy Spirit. He's cheering you on if you're willing. Yes. Many are called, few are chosen. If you're willing, He's right there. But he doesn't want 99%. He wants 100. And that's, that is a fight, yes. I'm not going to lie. That's, yes, that is a struggle. But it's worth it. It's worth it, man. You can gain all the world, but what is that? You lose yourself, yeah. Lose yourself in order to gain. Eternal life. Holy Spirit. Okay. Let's go to um, one more scripture and then we're good. And we're done with the scriptures. Let's go to, um, let me look here, Luke 14. Luke 14 is basically the same parable that we just read already, but in a different light. And I want to point another thing out here. Um... Okay, this is uh, Luke 14, verses 16 to 24. And then he said to him, uh, sorry, back up, 15. Now, when one of those who sat at the table with him, with Jesus, heard these things, he said to him, Blessed is he who shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. And Jesus said, Oh, now that you say that, let me tell you something. <laughs> then he said to him, A certain man gave a great supper and invited many. Many are invited. You and I were all, all, all of these people, all these, not just Christians, all these people out there, they're all invited. And he, again, he sent his servants at supper, time to say to those who were invited, come for all things are now ready. Everything is ready. Everything is prepared. My son died already. Salvation is there. Holy Spirit is poured out. Let's get this thing going. Come on. Everything's ready. Let's go. But they all with one accord began to make excuses. Ah. Uh, to take care of my house and my family and my business okay. come on man i can't serve god now i'm coming on sundays i'm gonna pay my tithes you know I and mean, we gotta keep that show going but you want me to go out and pray for this person over there at walmart what oh, i've never done that before god really mm. I don't know, Lord. Maybe tomorrow. All right. Okay. Verse 21. So that servant came back and reported these things to his master. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant. Then the master of his house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city and bring in the poor, the maimed, the lame, and the blind. Get all the rest. The good and the bad, get them all. All the ones that are really needy, get them out. Mm -hmm. And the servant said, Master, it is done as you commanded and still there's room. Well, listen to this here. That's a real servant. That's a servant who already knows his master. He came back 
and you, all the people that I was sent to invite, they didn't come. Well, on the way back, I might as well just, you know, get someone. So on, I figure on the way back, he already got all the poor, the maimed, the lame and the blind because come on, we have so much, he knows we have so much food. We, we have abundance because he says, as you just said, I already did that. I already did that. That's already checked off. Come on. And he said, oh, wow, great. God and the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. For I say that none of those men who were invited shall taste my supper. Yeah. Turn away. Turn away before you are turned away. My call for today is repentance. My call for today is that we break with excuse making. And we all, we all are guilty of that. I am guilty of that. Like I told you, like there, were, there are scriptures in here that we read that even last night I was, I was like, Lord, I should be sitting in that pew. I'm serious. Like I'm, I'm not preaching down at you. I'm, I need to listen to this maybe even later. This, I recorded this message. You know, this is, this is for us. This is for the church right now. This is for us Christians right now. We got to get going. We got to start producing fruit. Because we have a hungry God, a God who was, who, who wants fruit, was front, what, what, well, wants fruit from you. Amen. Okay. We need to turn away from our stuff, from our worldly mindset, and start having a biblical mindset. But yes, that's so hard, and I really struggle. I really try, but then this happens. I fall, I get up, I fall, I get up, and all this. Okay, well, keep on fighting. Get up again and do deliverance on that what kept you down, what is keeping you down. Amen. Do deliverance on this list yes. that I just gave you here. Yes. I'm serious. This stuff works. That's what I do at home. If you know something convicts me, I'm reading the, the Bible like this. Okay. For men will be lovers of themselves. And then the, the whole list. Let's just say... Let's just take the, the uh, example pride. I would take this and say, Lord, I'm sorry for my pride. I'm sorry I was loving myself more than you or was haughty or headstrong. I'm sorry. And I renounce it in Jesus' name. And in Jesus' name, you can pray, Lord, please deliver me. But you got you to gotta tell this thing to go. Okay? Because God already gave you everything. He already died for you. already forgave you like if we with our whole heart ask for forgiveness he is faithful and just to forgive you he yeah. is okay it's not about righteousness here okay it's not about um, uh, shame and guilt and righteousness it's about freedom and bringing fruit okay this is my point okay yes. i'm not condemning you we're all in this together let's repent let's turn and let's get this thing let's get the things that stand in our way let's chop them off let's get them out of our way and get going and bring fruit and bring in the maimed, the poor, the lame, the blind. Let's bring in the needy that really need you. Yes. God has given something to you. Right. A word, a revelation, a gift, a talent, whatever it is. He wants you Amen. to speak to the people around you. He's not sen sending me to your friends. Right. Sending you to your friends. He's not sending me to your workplace. He's sending you to your workplace. That's right. That's right. It's not about... Uh, being in a workplace and oh it's so sinful and so many sinners around me that's not what it is about it's about you being salt and light and influencing them Amen. That's right. you're really suffering yeah. or your aunt really suffers with COVID hey should we pray right now or can I pray for her or can I pray for you right now that's right, right now that's right. just pray and see what happens just see what happens just try it try give God I don't know 10 to 20 times what that many yeah, because probably the first few times, maybe something happens, maybe not. I don't know. But I guarantee you, out of experience, the enemy will come and say, See, told you nothing's going to happen. Uh, you got to kick this thing, kick this thing and push through and show, also show Holy Spirit that you're serious. God is a person. God is a person. He's not a, not a machine. Like if you messed up with your husband, with your wife, with your girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever. 
you ask for forgiveness, I mean, there's also a time where you kind of, you know, got to show that you actually mean it. That's right. <laughs> All right, and that's, that's what I'm talking about. <sighs> guys, let's pray. Let's, let's do this right now. Come before the Lord. You guys know what's going on in your life. Take this. I'm going to pray. And I want us to take this time to just come before the Lord and be, be real with Him where we need it. I can pray some more. If, if we, I can pray for y'all. We can pray for you. Um, whatever you need, you can come forward. Let's do this. If you need prayer, if you want prayer, come forward and we pray for you. Maybe we can uh, turn on some music. Can you turn on some music? Um, we come before the Lord. I'm going to pray for us. And we have some time with God and... I believe God's going to do something. This is not a message just to get us excited or pulled down or whatever. This is, I believe this is a word of God. And this is not a word of God for just today. This is for the season. This is the season we're in right now. That's right. Well, let's just stand up as just to get us a little active here today. Lord, we come before you. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your Holy Spirit already here in this room. Father, we ask you for forgiveness in the name of Jesus, for any pride, for any excuse making, for maybe even slandering your people, your servants, for talking bad about men and women of God. God, we ask you for forgiveness, for loving ourselves than you, loving money more than, than the Holy Spirit. God, we ask you for forgiveness for our pride and boasting and blaspheming and being disobedient to our parents. God, we ask you for forgiveness where we were unthankful to you and to people around us. God, we ask you for forgiveness where we were unwilling to forgive. And today in Jesus' name, we forgive every person, every single person for anything they did or said or didn't do or didn't say to us that made us offended, made us feel offended. God, we ask you for forgiveness. We ask you for forgiveness where we didn't have self-control, where we just were maybe even brutal, where we just acted out without thinking in our emotions and maybe even a spirit, a demonic spirit. God, we ask you for forgiveness where we despise good, where we call good evil and evil good. God, we ask you for forgiveness for being a traitor or being headstrong and haughty. God, we ask you for forgiveness and all humility where we love pleasure more than you, where we love the world more than you. God, we ask you for forgiveness from the bottom of our hearts where we had a form of godliness, where we pretended to have religion or pretended to be a follower of you, but we denied your power. We didn't walk in your power. God, forgive us. Yes, Lord. We ask you for forgiveness where we resisted you in rebellion. Jesus. And in Jesus' name, we renounce those things. We, we uh, separate our th ourselves from those things in Jesus' name. And we command those things to leave our life now. Jesus. In Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name, they have to leave. In Jesus' name. God, I thank you for your anointing right now for a touch. Heavenly Father, I pray that, we would, that you would hear our prayer. I ask you that you would hear our prayer, that you would allow us to touch your heart. Allow us to touch your heart. Because we need a touch of you too. We need a touch of you right now. God, we, want, we say we want to bring fruit. We want to be a servant who goes to help. We want to be a servant who meets you where you are. And that is outside right now. Father, 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 we want your Holy Spirit back in the churches. We're interceding. God, we want your Holy Spirit back in the churches. We want, we want to be obedient to you. Help us. Help us. Thank you for a touch right now. In Jesus' name, touch. Touch. Touch in Jesus' name. God, I thank you for a touch. Thank you for anointing and a touch. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Touch in Jesus' name. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I'll lift you up. In Jesus' name. Anything that's pulling you down, anything where the enemy is lying to you, 
I rebuke it right now in Jesus' name. I rebuke it right now in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Father, for a fresh touch. It's not over yet. God's not done yet with you. God's not done yet. He isn't, he isn't done. Oh, he isn't done. Thank you, Father. Touch. Freedom. 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 In Jesus' name. Complete freedom. Complete freedom right now. Right now. Anything, Lord. Anything you want, God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. There it is. Thank you. Power. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You feel that? Mm-hmm. That's God, man. That's Holy Spirit right here, right now. Just for you, man. Just for you. Because He has a calling on your life. He has a calling on your life, man. Woo! Holy Spirit, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. Wow. We say, yes, Lord. Use us. Wow. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I thank you for a touch, fresh touch. Wisdom. 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 Thank you, God, for wisdom. With parents. With the system. Oh, I see you avoiding like traps. You got the, the enemies shooting and you're like whoop, going around them, going like this. God, I thank you for wisdom. I thank you for wisdom to avoid the traps of the enemy. We bind and break any plan of the enemy to come against my sister. Any weapon formed against us shall not prosper, but send back to the enemy, back to the sender in Jesus name. Heavenly protection and favor with the authorities. Favor with bosses and principals and parents, doctors. Thank you, Jesus. Touch, 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 fresh touch, fresh touch, fresh touch, fresh touch, fresh touch, fresh touch. God has not forgotten you. He has heard your prayers. He has not forgotten. He has not forgotten. He has not forgotten. He has not forgotten. No, 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 no. No, he's not forgotten. He's heard your prayers. He's heard them. He's seen you weep. He's seen you and he's heard it. Answers here right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Freedom. God, I thank you for this touch. 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 Right now. Freedom. Right now. Take a deep breath and let it go. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. God, I thank you. Oh, Jesus. freedom, complete freedom. Just receive, just receive and let it go. Let it go. Just push it out, whatever it is. Just, I don't want this anymore. In Jesus' name, it has to go. In Jesus' name. Yeah, there it goes. There it goes. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Power. I thank you for power. Power. Increase power. Next level. Next level. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Greater impact in the community. In Jesus' name, I pray right now. Any boundaries that the enemy put up, I break right now in Jesus' name. And I release freedom, freedom, freedom right now. Greater impact with less strength, less less effort, but more impact in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. <laughs> more fruit, more fruit, more fruit. I declare more fruit in Jesus' name. I come against the lies of the enemy that tries to hinder your fruit and your your... Oh, with those, those, those weeds, I take those weeds out right now in Jesus' name. I take those weeds out right now in Jesus' name. All these weeds have to go. All this unforgiveness has to go in Jesus' name. Unforgiveness and pain and anger it has to go now in Jesus' name. Yes, yes, let it go. Forgive. Forgive your sister-in-law, your, your, your uh, daughter-in-law. Forgive. 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 Let go. Let it go. Forgive your son. Forgive. Let it go. All that pain. All that pain is still going on in Jesus' name. All that pain is still going on in Jesus' name. Jesus. Touch. 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 
I come against any lie spoken over you, or even your body. I rebuke it right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, the blood of Christ. I release the blood of Christ over this right now. Touch, 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 touch right now in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Freedom. 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 Yes. Complete freedom. Complete freedom. Complete freedom. Complete freedom. There it is. Touch. Touch. It's in the simplicity. I feel like Holy Spirit says it's in the simplicity. Doesn't need doesn't need a big stage. Doesn't need a big act. It's just in the day-to-day -day interactions. In the day-to-day -day interactions, I feel the Holy Spirit say. Don't don't make it bigger than it is. It's super simple. Holy Spirit is with you in the simplicity and the e it's going to be easy. Might be an act of overcoming. It's gonna be easy with the Holy Spirit. Oh God. Keep on going, keep on pushing, keep on oh, pushing Lord the enemy Jesus, out. Lord keep on pushing, Jesus. keep on pushing until it's gone in Jesus' name. Oh, you, touch, you, touch, Lord. touch, touch in Jesus' name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. I bless what you do. I bless what you do. I bless what you do. I bless what you do, God. I bless what you do, Jesus. I lift you up. We lift you up. We praise you. We lift you up, Jesus. Oh, we glorify you. More, God. More, God. We want more. We are more of you. We want to bring more fruit. We need to bring more fruit. And we say yes. We say yes, Lord. We say yes, Lord. Pray for my father-in-law, my thank pastor, God. my friend, my brother. God, I thank you right now for a touch, strength, yes, Lord. strength, strength. Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. There it is. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Touch. Yes, Lord. Receive your strength, your wisdom, your power, your We rebuke any plan of the enemy right now to attack, to kill, steal, or destroy in any way, shape, or form. Any um, bad words spoken against him, any lie, we break it right now in Jesus' name. Back to the sender. Any attack on his health, we break it right now. Any plan to attack his health, we break it, we rebuke it right now. Back to the sender right now in Jesus' name. Father, I ask you for mighty angels yes. in Jesus' name that would go into spiritual warfare around him, before him, even behind him in Jesus' name right now. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for a speedy answer of prayers. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. 